Kentucky Blue is going bowling once again here in 2023, but uh, that shouldn't be a big deal in Mark Stoops' era because this has just, uh, you know, been there, done that. But uh, they are at 6-3 and three with a few games left in the season and a difficult one, of course, coming up against Bama with uh, the Tide coming to Lexington. We got Kevin McGuffey on the line from Last Word on College Football. Join Kevin and the rest of the crew there covering uh, the game we all love. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing good, Mark. Thanks for having me on again, as always. Uh, great to come in and uh, talk a little uh, college football with you. Uh, big, uh, as you said, big game on Saturday. I can take you got a big win this past Saturday, and um, I got a, a a huge test in front of them uh, coming up uh, an early game on Saturday uh, here here in Lexington at noon. So uh, it should be uh, it should be a, a fun atmosphere, and um, we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens when, once we get into the game. I don't want to bring up what happened the last time Kentucky met Alabama. Don't want to bring up that score. And oh, it's, I don't that's, you, you can. It's okay. I don't expect it to be anything close to that, but it uh, may not turn out well for Kentucky. So we'll we'll focus on what we know is the positive, and that's of course a twenty-four to three win against Mississippi State. And uh, uh, by that score, I got to admit I didn't see any of this game, but uh, obviously Kentucky put the clamps on uh, the Bulldogs' offense. Right. Yeah. With, um, of course, Will Rogers didn't play again for Mississippi State. Um, Mike Wright um, was a starter. And of course, um, you know, that, that name kind of a uh, um, ch chills. I use the phrase with UK fans because he was the quarterback at Vandy last year when he engineered the, uh, the big upset uh, here in Lexington and broke that 26 game losing streak. Um, but yeah, uh, Kentucky, the defense, the defense did some really good things. Uh, Derek Jackson, uh, pickoff uh, pass interception for a touchdown. Um, you know, Devin Leary, uh, second game in a row. You know, the stats didn't jump out at you, but he he did some really, you know, had a good command of the offense, made some good throws. Uh, he did uh, late in the game, late in the third quarter, got knocked out of the game. Um, at first they thought it was a shoulder, a possible shoulder problem. And, of course, given his, you know, his history, everybody was, you know, get kind of worried. But Coach Stoops said it was basically – he, his he his his blitz, his vision was blurry, so he couldn't read. Basically, he couldn't read his script um, on his on his wrist, like the plays and and you know and all that. And so he he sat out most of the fourth quarter. And Kaya Sharon played, but you know they were ahead, and so they did what Kentucky does. They run the ball, and you know Sharon threw a couple passes. And then um, on his press conference this earlier this week, Stoops said when he asked for an update, he said, "Well, he couldn't read his." He couldn't read the play chart on Monday or last on Saturday, but he can read it now. So I think for the for for all of us, that's probably a good sign that he's going to play on Saturday. But as you but as you said, yeah, the last the last time Kentucky and Alabama meant it was 2020. Um, it was one of those games, I believe, that got added to the schedule uh, during the COVID season, um, where where they had the entire um, you know were, went to the all SEC schedule and. Um, you know, went from there, and yeah, it was ugly, sixty-three to three. I think Chris Rodriguez, among many other normal UK starters, didn't play. But um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I'm safe to say that it's going to be closer than that on Saturday. <laughs> For your sake, Kevin, I hope so, and I, I think I think you're right. Yeah. I think Kentucky's going to have a uh, decent effort for the Tide at home. They're right. just a ten and a half point underdog in this one, right. so we see those kind of uh, point spreads go down each week. A couple of those, mm -hmm. so there there is some hope to victory. What's uh, what? What do you think the path to a victory in this one is? Well, I will say first, I was a little surprised just on how well Alabama's playing. That the point spread wasn't you know a little higher. Um, I was thinking, you know, maybe two touchdowns. Um, but I I think um, – but as far as Saturday, I think Kentucky's got to play, you know, close to a perfect game. If you look in their three – the Kentucky, the, the three straight losses, Tennessee, Missouri, and Georgia, uh, they were hampered by penalties, uh, just, you know, mistakes, turnovers. Um, you can't have mistakes against, against Alabama. You've got to come out and play, you know, I think pretty much a near-perfect game. You know, Leary's got to hit – Leary's got to hit his receivers. You know, they've been the last two games, they've done a really good job. Um, you know, I think everybody's kind of healthy now, which has helped. So um, that, that's one thing. And then I think on the other side of the ball, Alabama has had trouble um, with sacks um, with their offensive line. 
I think if you get, you know, Deion Walker, Octavius Oxendine, a couple of those guys up front, get in there on Milrow and get some pressure and, um, you know, get him on the ground a few times. I think that's Kentucky's, you know, that's Kentucky's best chance. But I think you got to play close to a perfect game uh, to be able to beat Alabama, which, you know, is funny because what a month, six weeks ago, everyone was, you know, throwing dirt on the, on this team saying Alabama, you know, not, not, not ever. I would say, yeah, I'll say not everyone, but a lot of people were like, okay, is, is Saban, you know, is this the year, you know, that the Saban just doesn't have the team. And then he went back to, you know, sat Milrow out for a game, um, had, had another quarterback in, brought him back in. And they've just been, have been on a roll ever since. And like I said, that performance he had against LSU on this past Saturday was just, you know, really, really impressive. So like I said, they got to have. I think they's got to play close to a perfect game. Uh, no mistakes. Uh, limit the penalties. No dumb penalties, which has been uh, something that that has been a problem. That was a problem in those three losses. And um, you you do all of that, and I think you got you got you got a chance. It's going to be a, an a electric crowd. I think um, Stoops echoed something he said before the Florida games. And I think they're going to open up tailgating at like seven a.m. So you know, encouraged everybody to get in, in their right frame of mind and, uh, you know, maybe have a, have a few and get ready uh, get ready for the game and be loud. And, um, you know, and like I said, we'll, we'll see what happens. Like I said, I, I, you know, getting, you know, Alabama is obviously the benchmark of the SEC, and um, it's not that often that Kentucky plays them. I think maybe four every four to six years. Um, of course, we'll see what happens when the new schedule starts. But um, like I said, not to repeat myself, but you, you play close to a perfect game and uh, get some pressure on Melrose, and I think you got it. Maybe you have a chance. Stoops has had to go to that line a few times with these early starts, encouraging the home crowd to to mm -hmm. get uh, in the mood. We'll say uh, for the <laughs> right. ball game. And uh, right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> with Alabama and Louisville being two of the final three games, and South Carolina certainly not having the kind of season that they wanted but still right. it's a sec eastern division game on the road that mm -hmm. um i guess the 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 downside is that this is a difficult three games on the plus side is if they can pull out one of these two games against bama and or louisville mm -hmm. and or hey let's let's uh shoot for the sky win both of them and win all three and they right. they would really make a major move in the rankings oh de definitely um I think, you know, Kentucky's Kentucky schedule, I think, you know, I've talked about this. It was so, you know, you know, the front half of the schedule was, you know, not so easy, not so tough teams. And then, you know, the last half of the schedule, um, you know, Georgia, Missouri, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi State, South Carolina. And of course, we didn't think, I mean, people up I-64 here maybe thought Louisville was going to be that, is going to be that good this year, but uh, most people, I don't think, saw what's been happening with Jeff Brom's team, you know, happening. And then, of course, they play at Louisville in the last game of the season. It's a rivalry game. You never know. But as you said, if Kentucky could win two of these three, um, would definitely enchant, um, enhance their bowl. You know, getting that win last week was great because it got to the six wins. And so that pressure is off. Um, you know, obviously, we were all expecting eight or nine wins this season that May or may not happen now, but um, you know, like this week I have our bowl projections, which I do. I've got Kentucky in the uh, the Liberty Bowl there in Memphis, um, playing Kansas State, I believe it is. But you know, at this point in the season, once you get bowl eligible, it, each win, if you you know, as you will know, if you pick off a win, uh, that enhances your bowl chances every week. So you know, they could somehow uh, pull out a win on this one, as you said, sweep these last three. You could be looking at maybe another another citrus bowl or um you know maybe the gator bowl you know one of one of those one of those two games you end up with a january a january first game which is a uh, pretty uh you know always good to go ahead to florida for the new year <laughs> there it is uh kentucky hosting bama noon eastern espn game uh for the cats at six and three well kevin we appreciate you stopping by and uh breaking things down for us Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me on again, as always. Uh, appreciate it and uh, look forward to talking to you again uh, in the future.